say that force may sometimes be necessary is not a call to cynicism, it is a recognition of history. U.S. President Barack Obama makes the case for war as he receives the Nobel Prize for Peace. Hello and thanks for being with us. I'm Marcia McMillan. Let's get right to our top story. A rare honor today for a sitting U.S. president. Barack Obama became the first in almost a century to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. He accepted it with gratitude and humility, humility knowing that it comes at a time when his country is still at war. CTV's Paul Workman reports. For Barack Obama, there was no avoiding the irony, nor did he try. The Nobel Peace Prize laureate. I accept this honor with deep gratitude and great humility, he said, but argued that sometimes war is morally justified. I face the world as it is. To say that force may sometimes be necessary is not a call to cynicism, it is a recognition of history. And so a president who sends tens of thousands of soldiers to fight in Afghanistan, yet accepts the most important peace prize in the world. War as a military commander-in-chief. And so I come here with an acute sense of the costs of armed conflict. There were huge crowds in Norway and the inevitable voices of protest. You won it, Obama, now earn it. I believe that force can be justified on humanitarian grounds. War is terrible, but at times, said the U.S. president, war can be just. And there are rules of conduct the United States must always uphold. That is what makes us different from those whom we fight. We lose ourselves when we compromise the very ideals that we fight to defend. There was applause only twice. A second time when Obama spoke of Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King and their faith in humanity. Let us reach for the world that ought to be. That spark of the divine that still steers within each of our souls. Many of Obama's critics view the awarding of the Nobel with ridicule and amusement. For all his humility, he delivered a speech that was unapologetic, forceful, and righteous. It will be left up to the historians to decide, long after Obama has left the White House, no doubt, if he deserved the prize or not. Paul Workman, CTV News, Washington. Salon Simmons is a professor at George Mason University's Institute for Conflict, and Anal Conflict Analysis and Resolution. He specializes in American politics, and he joins us now from Washington. Hi there. Great to see you. Hi, Marcia. So what did you make of this speech? Did it strike you as odd at all that here we have a president who's winning a peace prize, but he's also a war president? Well, there is a tremendous irony there, and I think that it's no surprise that the award was given at this very moment. And I think what we might think of this, in a way, is, a, is you, a Obama dealing with his European problem, what we might call a European problem, because uh, uh, Obama is very appealing in Europe, and yet it causes trouble with him back home, because it seems like he's tying his hands and using American power in the way that many Americans would like to have him do it. In George Will's phrase, they adore him and ignore him, give him prizes, and yet don't do what he would actually like them to do. Oddly enough, I think that there might be a problem for the prize, at least domestically, that is in the United States, that Americans have lost faith in the prize itself. It's becoming a bit of the anti-George Bush uh, pr uh, prize. And, uh, and in, in the same way that science is being undermined, it would note the recent emails are, uh, in climate controversy, there's a, there's a turn away from professional institutions in the United States, and the prize might suffer from that. That's important because the United States is, is one of the biggest players still, even with the rise of China and other powers. And, uh, and if, if, the United, if Americans break with the prize, that, it, that at least undermines a little bit of the legitimacy of it. Why is that? Why are they sort of turning away from it? Well, you know, there's an incredible polarization here, and I think that uh, when, with the United States, uh, put it this way, Americans think that they're out there doing the hard work of stabilizing the global economy and putting down conflicts which are, uh, that, that threaten it in some fundamental way, and is, in other countries, not necessarily places like Canada, but certainly parts of Europe, are uncomfortable with that and, uh, and are more, uh, if not pacifist, than at least um, uh, concerned and prudent in these issues. And Americans uh, feel that there's a judgment of them in that, and they feel a little bit resentful. But let me tie it back to our foreign policy ideologies. On the one hand, we're very idealistic and very almost messianic in what we would like to do, go and save the world, the free world. On the other side, we want to come home and isolate ourselves and let other people deal with themselves and, and personal responsibility kinds of issues emerge. Those things come into, into a kind of conflict. On the one side, you say, well, 
let's go save the world and have elections very quickly, and then if they mess it up, it's their problem. That's not good for long-term development in places like Afghanistan and even Iraq, where development, local capacity building is crucial. And that's what we're finding on the ground is not being done enough, is helping the, Iraq, the Iraqis and the Afghanis to build their own societies over the long run, not simply go help pull out, as the Pakistanis even today have said that we have done. So that's the crucial problem that Americans face. And it's very difficult to understand that because most Americans, of course, don't have much experience in the world. So I think that might encapsulate it, but it is a problem both for science and for many professional institutions worldwide in a domestic sense. All right. Now, he's been criticized for this perceived snub of many of the events planned around a Nobel Prize winner, including, I believe, meeting the king. This was a whirlwind visit. Uh, he was expected to be back in Washington yeah. midday on Friday. Is that a fair criticism, or is that just smart strategy on his part not to draw any more attention to this somewhat controversial prize? I think it's very smart local politics, that is domestic American politics. You'll note that many people are not criticizing the speech in the way that they might have otherwise done. Uh, even Republicans seem to feel that the yeah, speech was pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, they like it. And it, I think that what they're uncomfortable with is he's not all in. He's not escalating. But by the way, I must say that a lot of the research suggests that one of the things that you do if you don't want an escalation to get out of control is you try to rein in and everyone to set limits and set a time limit in particular so that when, you, when it's, let's say, these 18 months are up, you say, is it going well or not? And you have a decision point. That helps you to keep from spiraling out of control. That alone may be enough to give uh, Barack Obama the Nobel Peace Prize if he can stop the Americans from getting involved in too many conflicts that won't produce any positive outcomes. All right, Sloan Simmons, always great to have you on. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you.